the Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. Welcome back to another week of This Week in Royal History. I'm your host, Rebecca Larson, and I'm here to share with you some interesting stories from royal history. Not just the Tudors, but most definitely a bit of English, Scottish, French, and Spanish history, as well as much, much more. So let's get to it. The Vikings and the Anglo-Saxons. What a time in history that was. And isn't it amazing that we know so much about that time and the people who lived in it? On the 8th of January, in the year 871, Ethelred I of Essex defeated the Danes at the Battle of Ashdown. Four days after he and his younger brother, future Alfred the Great, had been defeated at the Battle of Reading. The defeat had become a crushing blow to the kingdoms, since the Danes had already conquered two of the four Anglo-Saxon kingdoms, and Wessex was the grand prize they sought to gain. But what events led to this event? By 870, the Vikings controlled both the north and the east of England, which also included Kent, and they were advancing towards Wessex. The Vikings, who had conquered the southeast, had come from Denmark. Near the end of that year, the Danes sailed up the Thames in their longboats. Their destination was Reading. They arrived around the 28th of December, 870. And at that time of year, we can assume that the Anglo-Saxons were still enjoying their Christmas festivities. So, because of that, the heathen Danes captured the city of Reading easily. Ultimately, both sides divided forces, and the Danes suffered heavy losses, including a king and five earls. Ethelred and Alfred's forces enjoyed a short-lived victory, followed by two more defeats. Ethelred died a year later, and because his sons were too young to rule, his brother Alfred stepped up and became known as Alfred the Great. Let's jump forward to a time period we're a bit more familiar with, the 16th century. The early 1500s in England were some of the most joyous years under the reign of Henry VIII. He married his brother's widow, Catherine of Aragon, and they went on to be married for over two decades, with only one surviving child, a daughter named Mary, who later became the first queen regnant of England as Mary I. Catherine of Aragon's younger sister, Maria of Aragon, had also spent the first part of the 16th century married. She married Manuel I of Portugal in 1500. Manuel had previously been married to Catherine and Maria's sister, Isabella, who had died a couple of years earlier. So through her marriage to her former brother-in-law, Maria of Aragon became Queen of Portugal. In 1502, Maria gave birth to a son, John, who succeeded his father as king. And then the following year, she had a daughter named Isabella. Now, Isabella later became Holy Roman Empress. In 1504, another daughter was born to Maria, called Beatrice. And she is our focus today. Beatrice was born on the 31st of December, 1504, to Manuel I of Portugal and Maria of Aragon in Lisbon. Beatrice married Charles III of Savoy in April, 1521. They had nine children, though only one son, Emmanuel, would survive to adulthood. In 1536, Beatrice and two of her young children fled to Milan after the French conquest of Savoy. Christina of Denmark, Dowager Duchess of Milan, welcomed them. And Christina, that name probably sounds familiar to you, doesn't it? Well, she was essentially the woman who told Henry VIII she would only marry him if she had two heads. Beatrice finally returned to Savoy in 1537 and reunited with her husband, Charles. Beatrice died this week in history in 1538 at 33 years old. She outlived her husband, Charles, who died 15 years later, 
but he never remarried. Philip V of France, also known as the Tall, received his coronation on the ninth day of January in the year 1370 in a hastily performed ceremony at Rheims. Every royal family has its drama, and this one is not without exception. Philip was the son of Philip IV of France and Joan of Navarre. Upon his father's death, his elder brother, Louis, inherited the throne, becoming King Louis X of France. Now, King Louis died unexpectedly while his second wife, Clementia, was pregnant. Louis's brother, Philip, the tall, stepped in and managed the regency until his sister-in-law gave birth. When she did, it was a son. And as King John I, this son had the shortest reign of any king in French history. Philip succeeded his nephew, John I, who died at only five days old. And there was a dispute that his niece, Joan, was the rightful heir. Philip gained support for his claim and set the precedent that females could not inherit the French throne, which later became popularized as Salic law. E. Katerina Pavlovna was born on the 21st of May, 1788, to the future Paul I of Russia and Sophie Dorothea of Württemberg. She was their fourth daughter and named after her grandmother, Catherine the Great. Catherine quickly became a favorite in the family and maintained a close relationship with her elder brother, future Alexander I, throughout their lives. To avoid a marriage to Napoleon, Catherine married her first cousin, Duke George of Oldenburg, in August of 1809. The couple had two sons before George's death in 1812. In the time after her husband's death, Catherine traveled with her brother, now Tsar. Catherine traveled with her brother, now Tsar, to England, where she met her second husband, Crown Prince William of Württemberg, also a first cousin. William was in an unhappy marriage when they first met. An annulment agreed on by both sides of the marriage was quickly granted. Catherine married William in 1816, and they had two daughters. That same year, she became Queen of Württemberg upon her husband's accession to the throne. Catherine became involved in charity projects in Württemberg and focused on elementary education and hunger. Catherine died only six months after the birth of their second daughter, this week in 1819. She was 30 years old. One of the people surrounding Mary I of England, whose name we hear is Jane Dormer. Now, Jane was born on the 6th of January, 1538, to Sir William Dormer in Mary Sydney in Buckinghamshire, England. She grew up during the Reformation in England, and her two families conflicted with one another. Jane was a playmate to future Edward VI, and beginning in 1554, she was one of Queen Mary I's closest friends. While first meeting during the reign of Queen Mary I, Jane Dormer married the Duke of Feria in 1558 after Mary had already died. The couple had two sons, though only one would live to adulthood. The next year, Jane and her family returned to Spain after the Duke was replaced as ambassador and due to their Catholic faith. In Spain, Jane was a magnet for exiled English Catholics, but kept up correspondence with Queen Elizabeth I. Jane's husband died in 1571, and she took over running the estates. After being ill in 1609 and bedridden in 1611, she died this week in 1612 at the age of 74. She was buried at the monastery of Santa Clara in Zafra. Joan of Navarre was born on the 14th of January, 1273, to Henry I, King of Navarre, and Blanche of Artois. In 1274, her father died and she became Queen of Navarre and Countess of Champagne. 
with her mother as regent. That same year, she traveled with her mother to France for the protection of the king. Under the Treaty of Orleans in 1275, Joan was betrothed to a son of Philip III of France. In August 1284, 11-year-old Joan married 16-year-old Philip, heir to the French throne. He became Philip IV of France only a year later, and she was queen consort. They had seven children, though only four would survive to adulthood. All three of their surviving sons would be kings of France, and their only surviving daughter, Isabella, was Queen Consort of England as wife of Edward II. Joan and Philip enjoyed a close relationship, perhaps due to growing up together at the French court, and he even refused to remarry after her death. Although being Queen of Navarre in her own right, Joan never visited the kingdom and was more focused on the richer and more important county of Champagne. Joan died on the 2nd of April, 1305, at 32 years old. As the daughter of Philip I of Castile and Juan of I of Castile, Catherine was born on the 14th of January, 1507. She was the couple's youngest child and was born after her father's death in 1506. She was named for her maternal aunt, Catherine of Aragon. When Catherine's mother was forced into imprisonment by her grandfather, who then served as regent of Castile, Catherine was only a child. Catherine was the only child to accompany her. She remained with her mother until she came of age to marry. Anne was finally released. Catherine married her first cousin, John III of Portugal, in February 1525. They had nine children, but only two survived to adulthood. Catherine filled her court with women scholars and accumulated a substantial library. When her husband died in 1557, she fought for the regency of her grandson because her own son had died in 1554. She fought for this regency against her daughter-in-law slash niece, Joan of Austria. Catherine was granted the title of regent and served until 1562, when she gave the regency to Henry of Portugal. She died on the 12th of February, 1578, at 71 years old. It was also this week in history, in 1526, that the Treaty of Madrid was signed. Emperor Charles V and Francis I of France signed the Treaty of Madrid, which meant the French king had to give up on his claims to Burgundy, Italy, and Flanders. Also this week in 1814, we look at the Treaty of Kiel. Now this treaty was between the King of Denmark and the King of Sweden. The treaty meant that Denmark would have to give Norway to the Swedish king. Well, that concludes this week in royal history. I hope you enjoyed the little tidbits from history I've chosen for you this week and hope to see you again next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Tudor's Dynasty podcast. You can follow and support the Tudor's Dynasty podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon at Tudor's Dynasty.